Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. I'm very excited to have our first guest here tonight. He is a New Jersey legend, really a basketball legend. Um, he uh, he was the head coach and still is the head coach. He started in 1973 of St. Anthony's basketball team in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, and uh, just probably, arguably, the best basketball program on the high school level of all time. Uh, he's got a book out. The book is called... Uh, I don't have it in front of me right now. What is it? What is the name of the book, Coach? Uh, Chasing Perfect. Chasing Perfect. Okay, something you did rather well for and a if long I, time. If I did a good job, I would have brought a book and handed it to you. <laughs> that's all right. We'll, but we'll, that's we'll, the difference believe. between high school coach and <laughs> somebody who knows what they're doing. Believe me, we'll plug it uh, enough. <laughs> Chasing Perfect. Please welcome Coach Bobby Hurley uh, Sr. What's up? Thanks for having me tonight. Uh, and believe me, it's it's my pleasure. So you started in 1973 at St. Anthony's and uh, in Jersey City. And the good thing about a Catholic school is you're allowed to recruit, you know, from around the, the, the neighboring areas. And um, uh, was basketball always a passion for you? Did you grow up in Jersey City? First yeah, I'm, a, I'm lifelong. You grew up yeah. in Jersey I, City. My first team consisted of kids from about four blocks around the playground that I grew up in. Right, okay. So I knew the fathers, older uh -huh. brothers, and, uh, and that's you how played, it started. You played, where'd you go I to high school? St. Peter's Prep in you Jersey City, St. Peter's, Peter's Prep. College. St. Peter's College, so all Jersey City, like straight through. My first flight on a plane was <laughs> I was 25 and just got married. Wow. So okay. when you talk about, like, not, you know, not broaching, like, not getting out in the world much. I hear you. I was the oldest in the family. You I were, wasn't going away to college. I was going to be in Jersey you City. You were very and, provincial, uh, and you played and, uh, North Jersey-style ball, uh, uh, you know. Uh, and, uh, okay, so in 1973, you take over as head coach at St. Anthony's. Now, uh, were you immediately good? What happened? Like, well, what, 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 well, I had coached the freshman JV team for five years. Okay. So the kids that I inherited the first year... Uh, in coaching, I coached everybody. Right. And the first year, uh, I was a varsity coach. We won the state championship. So they knew you. And the first year, yeah. you won the states. Uh, yeah. And that's so right, right yeah, there. So we went, yeah. You make a mark. <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, we were 27 and two the first year, won the states, and then the following year, we were undefeated, and we were number one team in New Jersey. In '74. '74. Okay. So now, at that point, obviously, you're hooked. Do you start to think, okay? Uh, I'm going to uh, maybe use this as a stepping stone to go to the next level? Or were you always just wanted to stay at St. Anthony's and make that as great as it could be? Well, because of that flight at 25, right. I, I hadn't really predicted that I was going to make uh, you know, too many dram uh, dramatic moves. Right. So uh, I was probably you know, going to stay in this position for a while. And I had, I had little kids. You know, my kids were like three and three and like Is a Bobby your oldest? Bobby's the oldest. Bobby's yeah. Danny is his He's younger brother. 18 months younger, okay. and then I have a daughter, Melissa. Who's, so you had the uh, Irish twins going on there. Yes, a little bit. Yeah. Yes, yes. And and and, uh, and you have one other uh, child. My daughter, Mel Melissa, Melissa, is a teacher in Jersey City. And yeah. did she play basketball at all? She was very social. She played. She didn't play like the way I would say she should have played. <laughs> she, <laughs> played she, she played a little bit, and then right. she lost interest, and she was very social. But that's really cool that, uh, you know, someone as good as you or what you do and uh, and successful, you know, for whatever reason it was, stayed there and were loyal to these kids. I mean, you're still there today. Yeah, well, you know. lack of ambition, I guess, here is pretty much... <laughs> yeah, but still, uh, <laughs> it is impressive. I mean, how, what kind of, I mean, what kind of big-time offers did you have over the years? Yeah, I, th I probably could have coached at most of the, the major universities around because there's been turnovers. The, certainly in the Big at, East. You know, Rutgers and Seton Hall, St. John, schools right. like Fordham all have called me over the years. But, you know, I'm just, I'm very good with the high school age guys. I don't know if I'd be so good with the uh, recruiting. Right. And, you know, because you really, in order to recruit, you have to, you know, you have to. That's a whole lie. other business. You just have to it's just a whole other business. tell you, a lot of untruths. You do. Yes, yeah, kids, right. Kids, I mean, well, John, John went through it. John went through it. John the, on uh, the football level. Yeah, of course, right? I mean, yeah. So uh, I would assume that you are very disciplined and, and structured, and that's why it would be so hard to turn around and just kiss kids' butts, because you are kind of a, a deity to these high school kids. Yeah, and, and you can do that at that age because. The kids admittedly need me to steer them out of where they are. Sure. And they don't have anybody else who's necessarily given them that much help. St. Anthony's in is in Jersey them. City. Jersey City can be, you know, a rough area. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's not only about a good basketball team. You're, you're teaching them how to be men. You know, and make the right decisions in life. You know, yeah. so you, it's a lot of pressure on what you do, and you clearly have been great at it. Yeah, basketball already has been the easiest part of it. Right, the it's kids secondary. Can really play. It's secondary. It's changing, you know, changing habits and yeah. making their academic part of their lives, making them realize value of school. Yeah, right. that's got to be rewarding. And the, Definitely, the, the school yeah. size, it's 230 kids. Two, 230 co-ed. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. amazing. But you know, this bunch of players, you know, I had 
this year I had four kids accept Division One scholarships. And yeah, this wow. year we had almost 20 play college basketball this year. Well, wow. I saw that you've had over 100 kids go Division One. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's impressive. No, I, it's unbelievable. That's a big part of your job then, uh, like communicating the skills that these kids possess with all of these college coaches, I would assume. Yeah. Well, 2008, we had eight kids except Division One scholarships. Oh, my God. So, you know, three eight kids. Eight kids three went three Division One. Three kids that didn't start. Wow. Like, well, see, that's got to really help with kind of getting kids to come Oh, yeah, to well, school. they've been a legendary place, you know, for a long time. You know, yeah. your name and the name of the school itself, right? I mean. So but then the, the flip side, though, is I'm so demanding. Yeah. And I have so many rules because I think that the four years are in high school, you want to make sure that they do everything to get them to college. Mm -hmm. And then when they get there, they're old enough now to make more of their own decisions. So I have a contract they have to sign. It's oh. like 20 different Oh, no things. kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Curfew and That's everything great, under the though. sun. That's what kids need. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, some kids, some kids definitely do need it, and that's the thing. The problem is, for a coach at your level, is is treating each kid like an individual. Like some kids might need a push in this direction, some kids might not, and it means you really got to pay attention and you really got to get to know them. And it's and it's a finite thing. They're not going to stay for twenty years. You know they're going. Without naming any names, did uh, any uh, kids in your history that you just lost to maybe? drugs or some sort of negative thing that were great players that could have been a great player or a great person that you were personally very disappointed in, like yeah. heartbreaking almost. We had, we've had probably four in, in that you 40 can think years of, yeah. that are all deceased. Wow. And, uh, you know, the, the, the direction of their life, we got them at like at 16 and they're making progress. Right. And then all of a sudden the influences around them yeah. back in the neighborhood would get them off track or they'd commit to school and have an outburst in school and now they, they have to leave because of this player problem and they're calling me and they're try we're trying to figure out what the next step is. But when they lose the, at a little school where everybody can identify who they are and they get someplace else, they it's not a comfortable situation. Did you ever think the school, the Board of Education overreacted with a kid and maybe the kid deserved another chance where they didn't get it? Yeah, I, we've had a couple of kids that yeah. uh, I think a particular teacher held the grudge against the kid right and instead of allowing the kid to return the next year in a probationary situation they were adamant that they didn't want him to return yet they weren't going to teach him the next year wow. and anybody knows me i'm a i am a complete maniac <laughs> so if i was saying give you a, give this kid a chance right wow give him a chance because i believe in the capital punishment for parking tickets <laughs> you know, you know, so, so when i'm giving you a, i'm giving you a pass you, you should uh, right. everybody should jump on board how much of it over the years a sensitive subject uh, c can be racial when it comes to kids and their parents maybe in the in the sport of basketball can that does that card get played a lot to where it becomes a major problem for you to do your job no no no, no i think i think cuz the city background right. having lived in the city I was a probation officer 30 years. Yeah, you're not a guy coming from Nebraska. So when it know. comes when it right. comes to what was going on yeah. in the streets, you know, I could we could steer the kids away from things. But what we we do have we found out now that it's parents are way more concerned now about Johnny's career than yeah. they ever knew before. Right. It's, it's amazing right. that I'll have conversations with people more than one time where we'll talk about Johnny's future. Yeah, and you yeah, know, yeah. as an athlete, like if this is April and you want to know where John's going to be next November when practice starts. Well, I can't tell you that because I don't know how hard John's going to work course, from now yeah. until next year. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they can develop, and yet somebody would like a definitive answer yeah. right now yeah. about where their child is going to be, and maybe not be putting in maximum effort. So that's silly. So now the mid to late '80s, you've had all the success, and then your oldest son Bobby joins the team. Now, how difficult is that for him and you? Obviously, an amazing player on the high school level. Went went to Duke, won what two national titles yes. at Duke? Did yep. he was in the later years. Yep. Uh, uh, what was it like getting him on the team? How awkward was that for you and him? Well, it's harder for him than me because uh, I was already established at the school. I'm sure it was. He was trying to get established there and also uh, try to find his place. So we started him at the junior varsity level. Right. And about halfway through freshman year, we had to bring him up. We had a couple of injuries in the backcourt. And as soon as we brought him up, he, he fit in right away. He was small, but he really knew how to play. Shows a lot of class on his level to be able to do that yeah. mentally. So the strength yeah. to just fit in well, like you know that. what happens, though. He can pass. Right. So there's one well, that's for sure. In basketball. Yeah, that's for when sure. you get guys shots, all of a sudden you have a lot of friends out there. Right, you right, know, right. Guys run on the fast break because they know the guy's going to deliver the ball. We